Hey, welcome to Life in the Leadership Lane. I'm your host, Bruce Waller, where I am talking to leaders that are making a difference in the workplace and in our community. What did they do to get started and what are they doing to stay there, to stay in that leadership lane and stay? Oh, man, I've got a very special guest. Her name is Jennifer Swisher. She is the Chief Human Resources Officer at Brain Nation. She's a certified HR professional with her SPHR and her SHRM SCP. She's a former president of the San Antonio Human Resources Association a few years back. And she is also a former member of the Texas SHRM State Council. And I am so excited to have you on the show. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Bruce. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a great opportunity to talk with you today. I appreciate the offer. It's always a great opportunity to talk to you. And we're going to talk leadership today. I absolutely cannot wait. Uh, we're going to talk about leadership development uh, and a whole lot more. And, you know, we uh, have known each other for a few years. We actually got to know each other in the Texas SHRM uh, State Council when you, when you were serving. And since then, though, I've gotten to know you a lot more in our CLIMB group. And it's been so much fun getting to know you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. I, uh, I'm so happy that you invited me to that group. And um, it's been more than a year now that, that I've been participating in that. It's, it's been such a great experience. And I'll tell you, for professional development, um, not just networking, but professional development, it's just been um, an amazing experience. Oh, man, we're going to talk a lot about that um, because I, <laughs> I really I, I admire a lot of the things that you're doing. And so uh, we'll talk about that. But I want to start off the show by uh, you sharing a little bit about, you know, for, the, for our listeners, um, who is Brain Nation and, and how do you serve your customers? Yes. So Brain Nation is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we serve K to 12 students. So we're an educational organization. We have a Texas public charter school district that we operate. And so we have a total of uh, five charter schools and one uh, private school that we operate, um, not just in San Antonio, but through um, South Central Texas. So we our, our customers are the students. Oh, I love that. Our customers are the students. That's fantastic. Yep. Hey, so let's let's just kind of go way back. Let's start off the show uh, by sharing the Jennifer Swisher story. I would love to hear uh, you share a little bit about, you know, hey, where did you grow up and how in the world did you get into HR in particular in leadership in HR? So um, not so long ago, Bruce. <laughs> I love, it. I love it when the story starts out not so long ago. So um, I'm originally from San Antonio. Um, I was actually born in Brownsville, Texas. And after a year, my parents came back to San Antonio. They're from San Antonio. So um, I say that I'm, I'm San Antonian through and through. Um, so I grew up here. I stayed here. I did go to UTSA uh, for my undergrad degree. And um you know, it's interesting. I knew, I always knew I wanted to go into business, mm. but business, as we know, is such a broad category. So when I went to UTSA, I, um, you know, I said business administration, I'm not sure yet. Is that finance? Is it accounting? Is it marketing or what? And so pretty early on um, in my undergrad degree, I actually went um, and applied for a position at um, Texas Med Clinic, which is a local urgent care clinic here um, when I was there, we were only in San Antonio and we had five clinics. Um, now they're, you know, in, in Austin and New Braunfels and they're, they're kind of just, they've grown leaps and bounds since I was there 20 plus years ago. Um, so I applied for a receptionist position at Texas Med Clinic part-time. I'm in school, you know, need to do something, need to get a, a position. And I'm not kidding. I got there to apply. And at the, at that time, the process was, you come in to fill out an application in person and you get an interview that day. If mm. the, if the director was available, they were like, okay, he'll see you now. And I was not expecting that. So it was a little, I caught, I got caught off guard. Um, so I go back there for an interview. I interview for this position. It's part-time admin assistant, receptionist, whatever. And as soon as the interview is over, he says, okay, well, I have good news and I have bad news. He said, the person that was moving, um, to, you know, to, with the, so we had a person that was moving, which opened the position you're applying for. I said, okay. He says, she's not moving after all. She's going to stay put. And I said, okay. 
<laughs> and of course, in my head, I'm thinking, so I just did this interview and there's not even a position, right? And he says, however, the position she was going to move to is now available and it's here in HR. And I said, okay. And he said, are you interested in, in that position? And I said, sure. So that is how it started in, um, I'm going to say 1997 at Texas Med Clinic in a small three-person HR department and, or I should say two and a half because I was a half and, uh, and it went from there. And within weeks, I just knew I, this is what I wanted to do. He, my director at the time was who I wanted to be. And, and that's, that was it. It, I started there and, and, uh, <laughs> changed and my major, changed the de degree, and uh, and went from there. So pretty wow. fun. Wow! And so, were you still going to school at that time? I was still going okay. to school. Okay. Yeah, I went. I worked. Um, I did part time, and within a few months, made my position full time. Switched my, you know, switched my schedules around, and uh, I was there for about a year and a half before I realized that, um, as you'll find out, you know, I don't do anything halfway, and I find. <laughs> I find uh, more and more duties that I can do and I don't say no very often. So before long, it was a full-time position and I just couldn't do full-time school and full-time work. So um, I did have to leave and, and just kind of continue on that path. But, but yeah, I worked, I worked there for um, about two years, again, part-time, full-time, part-time. And uh, it, was, it was such an amazing experience to get started and then just learn a little bit every, every time I move somewhere. So I love that story, um, especially when you, I got some good news and bad news. You're like, yeah. oh, I'm hoping that was the bad news. Um, <laughs> that's fantastic. Okay, so you said something that I want to touch on because I do like to talk about purpose. I, I do mm -hmm. like to talk about finding your lane. And uh, you mentioned that you knew within a few weeks that that mm -hmm. was what you wanted to do. And I'm always curious about like, was there a moment? So when you said that immediately, I'm like, okay, I want to know what was it when you knew, like, like, did something happen? Was it a feeling? What, what, did, what gave you that feeling? Like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to answer that question with a story at first. I love stories, by the way. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. I was listening to one of your podcasts last night and um, I had my daughter in the car. She's 15. And my daughter hates it when I listen to audiobooks and podcasts in the car. She wants to listen to today's top hits, right? And so she was like, mom, why are we listening to this? And I said, actually, I'm going to be on this podcast tomorrow. And she was like, why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why? What are you going to talk about? And I said, well, you know, we're going to talk about leadership and, you know, what I do and how I got here. And she says, all you have to say is, you're bossy and you'd like to be the boss of everybody. <laughs> I love it. I'm not kidding. That's what she said. And, and it's funny because the question that you just asked is what I realized really quickly in that organization. And again, that was 20 plus years ago. It was a smaller yeah. company, but I realized really quickly that HR and specifically in that company, that, that culture and that setup, that HR director had, I'm going to use the term very lightly, but had this power, if you will, right? He made a lot of decisions. He knew what was happening at all levels of the organization. And my role there was very minimal. I mean, I literally audited timesheets and time clock sheets looking for people who were late. That's what kind of organization it was. Like one minute late, write up, right? Yeah. One minute late, you know, I don't know that it's like that anymore. I think HR as a whole has, has grown up a little bit, but um I just knew, I thought, you know, this is the perfect position to be in to have some real effect and some change and know all the people that are working there and have insight and input into all the facets of the organization. Um, and so watching him and, and, and watching, you know, the department move again, I came in with nothing. I, I mean, it was admin for me. Mm. I did. I just, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to to get to know the people I wanted to um, lead. Uh, you know, the second, the second place that I went um, really was, again, still in college. And, and I remember meeting the owner, even smaller company. And the owner at that time did my interview because the person who was going to hire me was out. I just happened to walk in to apply. And the owner says, come on in, let's talk. And 
I said, you know, I'm going to school. This is what I'm studying. This is what I want to do. Um, I just need something until I finish, which was a couple more years. And, and he was like, as long as you're in school, you have a job here. I don't care how many hours you work, finish school. It's important. Do what you can. And, uh, and so I've just been blessed with so many opportunities to learn in a various uh, industries. I mean, Texas Med Clinic is medical. Um, the next place was an engineering firm. The next place was a hospital. The next place was a call center. I mean, and, and through every one of those places and experiences and bosses and coworkers, it's just a little bit more, a little bit more. And, um, and so with growth mindset, right, it's just, just learning and growing and, and learning what you don't want to do and learning who you don't want to be. And, and so it's, it's just, it's been a fun, a fun ride for me. Yeah. I, I like to, uh, I like to say that, you know, the more, the more we learn, uh, the, the more we're able to help others along the way, you know, it's interesting. You said that about the, um, you know, taking, you know, using the term lightly, have, having power and doing things a little bit differently. I think a lot of times we're also put in those situations. I remember being in a couple different situations myself, uh, to where at the time it just didn't feel right. But yet later, it helped us later in our careers to know, uh, number one, how, like, how that felt. And, and number two, it also gave us a, a picture of who we wanted to be and who we didn't want to be uh, mm -hmm. later in our career, which leads me to, you know, I always like to talk about, um, I always like to talk about mentors. And because I think mentors... Uh, on this show, I've really observed and, and learned that, you know, there's a common thread to leaders that really make a difference. And that is they all had mentors that played significant parts in their career. And I was just uh, wondering if you have had some mentors in your career and how, you know, what did they do to, to, to help you along the way? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to say, you know, that's the best part about what we do. Um, I don't know about other uh, careers, other professions, but I know from an HR perspective, we're social. We're social people. We, um, we build relationships. And I think that through uh, my experiences in different positions, again, with different supervisors and bosses and owners and um, et cetera, you know, I think that every experience I was able to, and, and maybe this is, this is just my personality. I was able to take, right? Tell me about why you do this. Show me how you do compensation. Show me how, what, you know, what does this mean for benefits? You know, and so um, my mentors, for the most part, have been um, really good supervisors. At the same flip of a coin, I've also had mentors that have been really bad supervisors, right? Don't, I don't wanna be treated like that. I don't want people to see me like that. You know, um, I, it, it's just part of what we do. And, you know, Bruce, um, when I was, you know, and I think from HR, everybody has different methodologies on how they recruit and what they look for. You know, some people like cover letters, some people don't. Some people like this, some people don't. I've always, um, I've always just had to chuckle a little bit when when managers would say, "Oh, they're they're job hopping, right? They've been in too many positions," and I'm like, "I'm I'm a lifelong job hopper, <laughs> right? I am, and and I'm proud of that because I know um, when something doesn't feel right, get the heck out of there as fast as you can, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. But learn from it. And so I do have mentors." Um, a lot of my mentors have been through pharma, through Texas State Council or Texas, you know, my current supervisor, my current chief executive officer, Jennifer Rauer, has played a tremendous um, role in my growth as an HR leader. I've met her, I'm going to say when I first started becoming involved in pharma, which was about 2002, 2004 timeframe. I've been very, very fortunate. You mentioned climb just here a minute ago, I have a, another similar group of, of HR professionals here in San Antonio. We, we kind of laugh, we call it the past president's club. You know, there's several of us that have been uh, former presidents of Sarma and, and they're a mentor group. We, we have a group, we reach out. It's, it's kind of, a, I call it mentor slash mastermind group, right? 
Um, we do, we do a lot of, you know, what are you guys doing or help me with this, or I'm considering this new job. What do you think? And, and so um, I think mentorship is really important, especially um, when you're young in your career, but at the same time, even now, um, as the chief HR officer here, I think mentorship is important. If I don't know something, I need to be able to um, reach out in a safe space and say, can you help me? Have you ever had this situation? Um, so it's all part of growth. And I think it's, it's important for everybody, no matter where you are in your career. Yeah, that's fantastic. The past president's club. <laughs> I love it. I, uh, yeah, of course, I'm I a past president. I think we have one member that's not a past president and we tried, but she was not taking it. <laughs> uh, it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time. I, uh, so I'm, a, yeah, I'm also a past president and, and there's something about having that group of like-minded individuals to learn from, but you know, uh, listen, anybody that's listening right now, get your pen out, get your journal out, take notes here. There's, there's going to be some good stuff here. One of the things I want to, um, I want to talk about here is, you know, you talk about, learning from others, learning in community. And uh, a, a lot of people though, um, a lot of younger people that I've, I've noticed, they ha are not quite uh, wanting to share maybe their, you know, what they don't know. And uh, I, I always like just, you know, as, as a mentor to others, that's one of the first things I say is that, listen, people that have experience want to learn from you. They want to learn what you're thinking. So you have to be vulnerable enough to get out there and share what's on your mind. What, what do you have to say, you know, for people out there that they want to, they want to learn in community. They want to network. They're just not quite sure how to do that. I would say it's hard um, from someone that was there, you know, um, when you're talking specific HR, especially if there's any young people listening to this podcast right now, I encourage, um, I encourage them to get involved in their local HR chapters. Um, I did as a student, you know, at UTSA, of course, I didn't have enough on my plate. I was a student chapter member at UTSA and, and became involved in SARMA really early on. And I'm going to tell you, you probably won't believe it, but, you know, I'd go to those SARMA meetings and I was insecure. You know, I, I didn't want to talk to people. I, I didn't know how to talk to people, you know, and and all of those things, but, but I would say that you're right. People, we have to be vulnerable, even with those age gaps. Yeah, I'm all the time, you know, uh, my HR generalist here um, at Brain Nation is, is in that the different generational um, sphere, if you will. And I'm always coming to her, you know, how do you do this? Tell me how you do that. Can you go and do this for me? You know, um, what's in, you know, and, and it's funny because she'll say something, have you ever heard of this? And I'm like, no. And then she'll, <laughs> she'll tell me and it's like, well, that's good. You know, I test you with all of the new uh, hip things, you know, <laughs> take it and run. But, um, you know, Bruce, I, I think you've said it before um, to me in, in climb. I pride myself with being just a normal, regular down to earth person, right? Yeah. Um, if I don't know something, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fill the air with something I don't know or, or anything like that. You know, I'm going to say it. I'm going to be honest. I am who I am. I'm not, I, I, I don't, not that I don't care, but what other people think about me or their perception of me as a, as a CHRO or as an executive, it doesn't phase me. You know, no. you're going to find me in yoga pants when I can be in yoga pants. You're going to find me in, in jeans when I can be in jeans. And so all that to say that if you don't know Say you don't know, but find the answer. And if you do know, speak up because, you know, any good leader is going to want to hear it. Nobody wants the, the, the yes man, the robots. You know, I was, I was, I think uh, in climb right now, we're, we're uh, reading Brene Brown's book, um, Dare to Lead. And, and even listening to her, she talks about her meeting with her staff and she's like, you know, we, I don't want them to agree with me a hundred percent of the time. I want them to be able to give me good feedback. Um, and, and I think that's important, not only for leadership, is to listen, listen to what people are telling you, listen to the feedback, um, try to dig deeper. And from the, from the people that are speaking up, you know, find that vulnerability to speak up and say, you know, I'm not sure about that, or this would be even better if, right, and have we ever considered this? And so um, that's, that's the feedback that I would give to those listening that um, you know, have a voice. It's important. 
Yeah, I love that. Have a voice. You know, uh, two is better than one. And I, I would say this, one of the things that I've admired about you, Jennifer, is that uh, you show up and you, I mean, here you are, a CHRO, and you're still showing up. You're still trying to learn. You're still trying to get better. Um, and in fact, um, I believe you're t uh, right now uh, in the process of uh, getting your master's degree. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. I'm about halfway done at the end of the summer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited for Hey, let's talk leadership. Uh, 2021. Here we are. We're in, you know, Q2, uh, second quarter. We're, we still are in a pandemic, but we're starting we're starting to navigate through this. And uh, I was I always like to ask this question to kind of start off th this portion. And that is when people say, uh, talk about leadership, it seems like everyone has a different definition. Uh, when someone asks you, hey, how, you know, what's leadership to you? What do you have to say about that? A leader, if you will, is a coach. Mm. I think a leader is a coach. I think when you, um, when you really think about leadership, it's about understanding what's important to those that lead or that you lead and play an instrumental role in their growth, right? So who are you leading? What is the purpose? Um, and, and how do you get to wherever you're going together? It's not about, you know, I go back to, I'm in charge of you or, or I control you or anything like that. It's about influence. It's about, um, you know, leading with a purpose. It's about servant leadership. It's about, you know, um, really getting to know the organizations, the people that you lead um, to take, to move forward. I know over the past two years, um, I have, I have been known to say around here quite often, you know, let's be better. Let's be mm. better. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, what did we do before? Is it working? And can it be better? Let's make it better. And so, you know, that's that's where I am uh, when it comes to leadership. I I love that. Let's be better. Oh my gosh, that is so good. I love how you frame that up with uh, a coach, because mm -hmm. a coach just makes you feel like you're part of the team. That you know, they're going to help you. They're going to lift you uh, along the way. I love that. Hey, you know, uh, I know 2020 was a tough time for all of us. I'm wondering here in 2021, do you find yourself leading any differently now that we've kind of been through that heaviness of the COVID period? Everybody went home, remote work, um, and a lot of people still are today, but have, do you find yourself leading any differently? You know, I've been doing this a long time and, and some of it is transactional, right? We do a lot of things in HR that are transactional. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that 2020 has been such an emotional year for so many people, um, you know, me included. Um, I came back to the office about two, three weeks ago um, and, and being able to work from home has been a blessing, but my company as a whole, um, we're teachers, right? We're teachers, we're, we're instruction and our employees had to go back to work this fall we opened up you know we we opened up we have students and and our teachers are back in the classrooms and unfortunately throughout the summer you know we had some employees that just they they weren't comfortable and so we had to make some decisions so i will tell you from from 2020 um and covid i've really really learned and been intentional on empathy that's kind mm. of been my keyword right empathy when you ask somebody, how are you doing? Really, how are you doing? And listen, and where can I help? And how can I help? And, you know, can I help? You know, Bruce, one of, one of my things, and, and I've learned this in the last two years um, with my family, is I am a fixer. I, I want to fix it and move on, right? I want, you know, something bothering you? What can we do? Let's fix it right now. Let's do it. Um, but I can't be a fixer all the time. You know, I have to listen. People have to process their own way. They have to move through the hurt, right? Through the emotion. And so all I can do is offer that empathy. You know, I know, I know how you're feeling. I, I or I can't imagine how you're feeling. Let's talk mm -hmm. through it. What can mm -hmm. we do to help? What, what can we change? Some things we can, some things we can't. 
Um, but I definitely have come back um, into 2021 really thinking things a little bit differently. And it's not just numbers and it's not just um, day to day. We got to really think about how people are affected um, and what does that do? You know, I, I get managers that'll come and say, you know, this isn't working or this person's not showing up. And, and it's like, okay, well, there's a lot going on. Have you really talked to them? You know, are they okay? Are they distracted? You know, and, and so um, I really have come, come to 2021 with a new perspective in that. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you sharing that. I, you know, we, uh, in, in, our, in our climb group, we actually read Everybody Matters. And I remember when Bob Chapman shared that percentage, and I've, I've shared this on climb before, that 88% mm -hmm. of the people um, that were part of this survey didn't feel like they were heard uh, their voice was heard or they were valued. And, and at the time, I thought that was a high number. But when I started asking a few people how they felt about it, I later realized that's a probably an accurate number and we've got to do a better job. I love how you use the word, uh, not just empathy, but you use the word intentional. Mm -hmm. Intentional. Because I was thinking about, you know, we were talking mentoring earlier. You're part of these different groups. You don't just like pop in and out. I mean, you're intentional, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm pretty sure your calendar is pretty full. And so therefore you have to be intentional about doing it. So anything that we're doing, we've got to have that intentionality, that, that, that mindset that, Hey, this is what it's just going to be part of our every day, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every day and empathy. I, I love how you shared that, you know, um, one of the things I really wanted to get you on today to talk, uh, have some really depth conversation about was leadership development. And, and the reason why is because I, I mentioned earlier about your, you know, in the process of studying for your master's. I mean, here you are, you're a top level leader. You have your certification in HR, both HRCI and SHRM. Um, you're in these, you know, mastermind groups continuing to lead. And now, you know, here you are, you know, studying for your master's. Now, first question I have for you is what drives you? Oh, that keeping the calendar full. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the calendar definitely drives you. <laughs> um, yeah, that, oppor you know, opportunity drives me. I rarely turn down an opportunity. The, the opportunity to, um, to do more, to, um, go back and get my master's, right? It was presented to me last year here at the school that I work for. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Um, okay. Now I have to stop for a second. Did you <laughs> have to like think about that? Because I mean, you're, I'm pretty sure your schedule was jam packed and all of a sudden that's presented and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I mean, no, that's the problem, Bruce. I don't think all the time. I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, let's do it. Give me more. I want to be involved. I love, I love that. Um, and I go back to, you know, Julianne, my daughter, when she's like, you just want to be the boss of everybody. No, but I do want to be involved in a lot of things. I will tell you, you know, balance is hard. Um, I learned, I learned over the, the course of my career that, that the family comes first, or that the family comes first. We all say our families come first, but I found um, in the last 10 years, I was putting my family second because of my drive to do more, to, um, you know, do better at work, do more for my volunteering, you know, community, um, get involved with Texas Sherm, get involved with SARMA. You know, I think at one point I was mentoring at an elementary school and junior achievement and, and everything that I could, because it just, it, it does, it motivates me, right? Staying busy and getting actively involved in things. And so a few years ago, I, I had to really put in perspective what was important. You know, if you asked me, 10 years ago, what was my, you know, what was important to me? I'd say my family is number one. But if you really asked me five years ago, where does your family fit in in all of this? I would have had to say they don't, right? My husband is watching my kids and I'm working late and I'm going to Sarma mixers and this and that and traveling. And, and, uh, and so I had to take some inventory and some stock into where things were. And, um, you know, right now it, my calendar looks really full. But it's actually thinned out. You know, I've, I've had to step away from Texas Sherm. I made that intentional decision last year to, to focus on the MBA. Um, and, you know, when it comes to 2020 and COVID, it's a blessing in disguise. I spent nine months at home with my, with my husband and my kids all working and schooling from home. And I was able to really reconnect. 
um, with what they needed and what they're doing and, and how school's going. And so, um, you know, I'm driven by the opportunity, but I also have to stay grounded by what's really important. You know, I appreciate you uh, sharing that and just your vulnerability, just saying, hey, you know what, it wasn't always like this. I think there's people out there listening right now who are, well, they may be overwhelmed because they mm -hmm. are involved in so much and they're just, you know, almost like drowning, like <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, this, this, this world of work that we're in. I know even with the pandemic has been uh, tough on a lot of people to, because of transition, working from home. I mean, there's just so much there. So I want to, I want to ask you this question. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have some other questions uh, around that, but as, as we're talking about, I'm, I'm just curious for somebody listening right now, like, when did you know, like, I've got to do something different, number one. And, and then how did you figure out what you needed to do different? Well, we're going to be vulnerable here, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you it's know. Life, um, this is life in the leadership lane. This gentlemen. is life in the leadership lane, you know. <laughs> You know, um, yeah, you know, when I, when I, uh, when I really knew I needed to make a change when my husband, my husband was, you know, Michael is, has been the best and we've been married for 21 years this summer. And, and he was like, you're never home. And when you're home, you're not here. You're on the phone. You're always on the phone and you're always on your computer. And, um, you know, my son's a senior this, this year, he's going to be graduating next month. And, um, we did a, he, he had some kind of a mother son football thing a couple of years ago and we went and, and the coach made each player get up and say something nice about their mother. Right. And Bruce, my son said, my mom works really hard to give me what I have and to take care of me. He goes to work before I wake up and she comes home late at night when I'm going to bed. And I know he, I know where he, you know, he meant well, but for me as a parent, it's like, you know, I'm not present. I need to be present. And, mm. um, and so it's all changed. I mean, it's been, it's been about mm. two or three years now, but COVID especially has helped. But mm. personally for me, it's, it's being present. It's not working when I'm at home, you know, shut it down. When during the last year at home, I, had a separate office, I closed the door and it was no different than when I go up the stairs, it's like driving to work. When I come down the stairs, it's like driving home. And when mm. the doors closed, we're closed. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to say no to, especially when it comes to volunteering. Yeah. You know, um, one thing that you didn't mention is that in 2020, um, in 2019 and in 2020, I was on the booster board for my son's high school, athletic booster board. That's a full-time job too. Isn't it? Uh, yeah. And so I started out in the year 1920, right? Um, fall of 19 as the vice president. And in the fall of 2020, this, this year right now, we're finishing up um, the president. So again, nothing is done halfway. Um, it's hard to say no when you're asked to step up and volunteer. But sometimes you do. And so uh, when I stepped down from Texas Sherm last year, it was heartbreaking. I'd been involved with so many years. But at the same time, it was, you will be back. And I, and I nodded and said, yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. No, I, listen, I, I'm, I'm so glad you shared that because I think that a lot of people, number one, needed to hear that. Um, and, and number two, um, I was thinking about, I, was, I went through a Brendan Burchard coaching session and one of the things he talked about was people that challenge you. You've got to keep those people close in your life, right? So, of course, your son's close, but, but, he, but he challenged you. Your husband, he challenged you. And the people that challenge you um, and, and just they tell you the truth mm -hmm. and they are good, uh, good for us. I, I have so many different mentors and I, I know that. Uh, a couple of times during my career, I remember I was challenged. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then I go back and start thinking about it. And I'm like, yeah, they're right. Um, and so it's so important, uh, honestly, to have those moments, like you said at the time, you know, it probably felt bad, but yet you, it gave you that, that was, th that was that 
I don't know, motivation is not the word, but that's what inspired you to say it's time to make a change, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear uh, people typically will, will make a change uh, uh, for one or two reasons. They're either inspired uh, or they're absolutely desperate. And so that, that's so good. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Okay, so, I, and by the way, I've done some volunteer work on the Booster Club and I was not kidding. That turns out to be a full-time <laughs> job. So good for you, uh, and it's always good to, to, to be involved and super excited. Uh, what um, what are the things I you know we talked we've talked about leadership development and obviously leadership development ha has helped you even get to where you are today, right? And, and will continue to help you. I always like to ask someone uh, that is serving in in this role. If, if there's somebody out there listening right now that said, you know, I, I, but I'd want to be a CHRO one day. I'm, I'm certainly, I'm in a generalist position. I'm in a director level position. I'm in, or I'm just getting into HR. I want to do that one day. What would be some, I don't know, a couple of tips you would share with them uh, to help them keep moving in that direction? Never stop learning. Mm. Keep growing. Um, you know, it, there's always something new to learn. So whether it's, it's regardless of the position that you're in, right? Um, learn from it, learn, learn as much as you can. Um, again, obviously, uh, this is all about about learning and growth. And that's, that's where I, I really put a lot of emphasis. You know, every opportunity, every position is a learning opportunity. Um, and it may be small and not just that, it's also about about building that network and that connection. Um, I've said it. I've said it before, especially with Sarma. You know, again, I'm still a member of Sarma. Um, I'm not as involved as I used to be, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I've made a lot of friends and a lot of connections through Sarma. And again, I I started with Sarma as a student. So once I got out of my shell, um, you know, I was able to really connect with people and and find positions in HR and again, it's, as you start to connect, as you start to network, as you start to build those relationships, it's amazing how many things happen just because I met somebody and, oh my gosh, they have the best personality. Um, if I ever find an opportunity for that person, I'm going to call them. We all know those people, Bruce, you know, those, those people, right. if somebody, sure. if I called you today and said, Hey, Bruce, I need a generalist. You could probably rattle off five or 10 names of people mm. that you think would be great. Right. 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 Um, so burning bridges, I would say anybody that, that is in the profession now that, that wants to, um, wants to excel, you know, don't burn any bridges, um, learn, move on the right way, um, grow in the right way, um, take on responsibilities where you can and, and really just, you know, take those opportunities for what they're worth and, um, eventually things, good things happen, right? Good things happen to people who work hard, um, and, and have the right mindset and the right attitude. So that's what right. I would say. No, I love that. I love that. I appreciate you sharing that. There's going to be, uh, some people out there that, that are taking notes. I'm just sure of it. Hey, I want to ask you this though. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we talked about you and your leadership development, your, your growth and your continued intentionality. Uh, but how do you, just for people who are listening, a lot of people are listening are in the HR community, how do you coach up your team uh, to develop them, to develop their selves? Do you, or do you have a leadership development program in your organization? Or do you, what do you do to help others grow in your organization? We don't, we don't have a leadership development program. Um, uh, program here within our organization, um, but we do we do uh, foster professional development. Mm. So we have budget for all of our employees to to do professional development. Um, go outside, attend PD. Here in my department, you know, I'm very very supportive. I you know again one of my mentors, Jennifer Rauer, my CEO. When I first started here, she was like she would say, you know, you need to do you feel fed? We need to feed you. Hmm. And I'll always remember that because it's like we have to feed our employees and make sure that they're getting what they need um, when it comes to development. And so, so I do that. I do that with, with my generalist here. I, you know, I tell her all the time, like, attend this, go to this. Um, in fact, yesterday I said, do you, do you need 
Um, I, I don't know how far your reach is, Bruce, but I'm like, do you need my Amazon password so you can use my Audible books? <laughs> like, you know, do it. I, and, and I told her, I said, take some time on the calendar. You know, I'm, I'm very active with the climb group. I don't miss usually. It's on my calendar. And I, my recommendation to my, my, um, my team here is lock off an hour every Friday morning to read. You know, block it out, out of office and, and grow and feed yourself. So it is, it is important here. Uh, we don't have a, a program necessarily, an official program, but we do encourage all of our staff to, to develop as, as professionals and, of course, um, as we go with, in leadership. Well, and, you know, really, it starts at the top. So even if you don't have a formal program, you still have leaders that are at the top that are continuing to develop themselves. And, and, and then, of course, you have a budget uh, and you're encouraging continue. And then it's up to... Uh, the, the team to to do that. I love it. Oh, man, I love that. Uh, how can I feed you today? Do you need to be fed? Oh, man. <laughs> you need to be fed. Yeah, you need to be fed. Oh, that is great. I'm gonna have to steal that one. That is absolutely fantastic. That's so good. So we talked about uh, leadership. We've talked about leading a team. I want to shift gears just a little bit. I want to talk about leading yourself. And, you know, you talked a little bit about what, what you've done as far as leadership development, but I want to know, I always like to pull out, is there a daily practice or some type of discipline that you do every day that keeps you on track? Oh, organized chaos. I tell you, Bruce, organized <laughs> chaos. So, <laughs> so um, and recently with the start of my MBA program um, and, and, everything COVID and everything uh, HR in the last year, um, I've really become a planner person. Um, you know, when you and I first met almost a year ago or over a year ago, um, I was like, I don't need planners. It's all right here in my head, right? Thank you sent me one. <laughs> I did. I was like, here, take it. I'm not going to use it. Um, and then I went back to school and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to school twice a twice a week. I'm going to have homework. I'm going to have booster club. We're going to have meetings. And so um, I bought a planner and I started using my planner. And so every day, you know, drive to work while I was at home, I did try um, some, a little bit of meditation. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I'd use, uh, I can't remember which app it was, but you know, I'd take a few minutes and I'd just sit in my office and I'd have some quiet time. Um, But really my quiet time now that I'm back is in a car. So I get in the car. Um, I, you know, I, I usually listen to one podcast every morning. It's called mm-hmm. Snacks Daily, um, you know, and it's kind of quick, fifteen minutes. What's going on? Financial, business news, yeah. right? And so I listen to that every morning on my way in. And usually I am early. I get here early, and and I start making the list, and I go through, you know, what didn't I do yesterday? What do I need to do today? Um, and and go from there. Uh, again, I I'm not a tedious little uh, list maker, have to cross everything off and check all the boxes, but I've organized my chaos. <laughs> I love it. I've organized my chaos. You know, I've organized my chaos. Well, you know, uh, I will tell you that um, I- I've noticed that everybody asks this question to everyone does something different, but what they all have in common is they all do it every day. Mm-hmm. Right. And so atomic uh, habit, Bruce, atomic habit. So, you know, somebody else mentioned that on the show, Atomic Habits, they were like obsessed with it. I think it was Lisa Collins who recently said that. I've listened to it on Audible. I need to go back and listen to it again um, because you're right. But uh, it's interesting how everybody has that. You know, I was listening to, uh, and I've gotten better at my plan. I think think what you're talking about though is in, in in the message I want the listeners to hear is that, it doesn't have to start. I mean, it doesn't have to always be the way it is now, right? Mm-hmm. It can, you, you can progress. I mean, and so I'm a better planner today in my season that I'm in than I was in my twenties. I promise <laughs> you in my thirties and even my forties, I, I just, I keep getting better. I love how you said earlier, you know, how do we get better? Right. And that if you have that mindset, it doesn't matter what you're doing, what role you're playing, you're planning, whatever it is, you'll continue to improve in that area. And that's fantastic. Oh, I love that. Hey, I want to ask you a uh, final question before we get into the last uh, part of the, the, the show. And that is, I always like to ask, was there any advice that you were given 
in your career, it could have been from a family member or friend, but was there ever any advice you were giving? It was so good. <laughs> you just find yourself giving it to others. I'm going to give you three. Okay. Okay. My dad always told me easier to find a job when you have a job. Mm. Right. So, you know, I would say I'm done, I'm leaving. And he's like, Nope, it's easier to find a job when you have a job, which from the HR perspective now, all these years later, that's one of the things we look for, right? Is this person currently employed, especially in the school district? Yeah. Um, and so with schools and, and we're hiring teachers, okay. you know, are they currently employed? And if they're not, why not? Right. So that's number one. Back in my my early receptionist days, always smile when you answer the phone. I love and, that. And I know you can see me and I keep fiddling with my AirPod because when I smile, my AirPod pops out. So <laughs> I always smile when I talk. <laughs> Let me just tell you, those that are listening right now, she has a huge <laughs> smile on her face, okay? Uh, that's fantastic. Yes, and then the last one is, um, and this one I bring, to this day I bring with me, and um, Sarah Spinharney was my VP of HR back in Baptist Medical, um, Baptist Health System years and years and years ago. And I remember specifically, um, I was young and I was like, but they're not following the policy, you know, black and white, black and white. And Sarah told me, Jennifer, we are not the HR police. All you can do is tell them what you know, document it, and move on. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like, okay. It was almost like I needed that permission, right? Mm -hmm. She gave me permission to not follow the black and white. And that, I mean, again, I worked for Baptist probably 2001 to 2005. We're 2021, and I still to this day say that out loud. Um, and and I say it all the time. I'm not the police. I'm not going to come around. I'm not. And, and I was accused uh, not too long ago of being the mask police, right? I don't want you to be walking around and looking for people not wearing their masks. And I was like, not my job. I'm not the police. I recommend da da da. And you know, for years I worked as a consultant, so I got that kind of down. But yeah. but I still say it all the time. It's like I'm not the police of you. You can. You can choose, I'm gonna tell you what the risks are and we go from there and I'm moving on, right? So three good pieces of advice that I'll tell you I live by every day. <laughs> I, lo I love that. You know, uh, you know, going back to the very first piece of advice you shared just now from your dad, it's easier to find a job when you have a job. So many times, uh, one of the things, this was a big observation for me when networking uh, with Dallas HR over the last 15 years, I would always notice that a lot of people wouldn't start trying to build a network or start networking until they were out of a job. Right. And I always like, just kind of felt bad. I was like, you need to be networking. And I want people to hear this right now. You need to be networking while you have a job. You need to be, mm -hmm. Jennifer used the word intentional. You need to put it on your calendar, whether it's connecting with someone on LinkedIn um, going to a, a social event, of, of course, once COVID, you know, passes, we can do that. Uh, but just continuing to build that network is so important. And so I would say uh, your dad was just right on target. Yeah. And you never know, Bruce, you never know how that network, um, one, you never know from their perspective, what you're doing to help that person, right? Yeah. But you also never know when that network, um, is going to be of benefit, whether it's looking for a job, whether it's um, need a service, you know, um, my superintendent came in last week and said, Hey, do we use this company? Do we have a company that you use to scan all your documents? I said, No, I have a scanner over there. We did my own documents, but I do know somebody from Pharma. And, and, you know, and so we go like that. If anybody ever asked me, do you know somebody who could relocate our employees? I would say, yes, I do. <laughs> yes. I know a guy right down I the know road. A guy. <laughs> I know a guy who knows a guy. That's fantastic. Uh, no, I love it. And you know what? I, I, I wish more young people were listening to the show as well. I, I, I know it, to, to some it may sound, you know, not hip, but just this <laughs> advice of no, like feel like even in high school, fill out a LinkedIn profile, start connecting with people and just start building that network because what they're going to find is you hear me say it all the time. Your network is your net worth. And um, the earlier you can start, the better. I, I figured that out in my, in really in my thirties, I think more than anything. And 
Um, so no, that's so good. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. Okay, so um, I knew I, t I mentioned the time would go by very fast, and it has. So I just have a few fun uh, questions that we're going to finish on in the segment. I like to call it's time to accelerate. So first question: book or podcast? Combination audiobook. I, oh, I, uh, yes. You've heard me say it. I read with my ears. <laughs> so in our climb group that we're talking about stands for connect, lead, inspire, uh, inspire, mentor, and build. Uh, we're on, we're on Facebook and it's a book club. And when we go to pick a book, we always have to make sure that book is on audible because uh, we have a lot of audible listeners. So that's fantastic. I oh, appreciate that. And by the way, um, I don't know if this is one of your favorites, but you recommended a book to us in 2020, the heart of leadership. That's like yeah. been one of my favorites. And funny is it's not a very long book at all. It's a very quick read, but it's one of my all time favorites. Yes. Oh, you know, I told an employee today to, to go out with courage. She says, I'm going to go and be brave. I said, have courage, be courageous. And that comes that. from the book as well. Right. <laughs> oh, we grow so much through that. Um, okay. So what are you grateful for? My family, my health, their health. Um, I think this year has really has really taken a toll on a lot of people, a lot of families. Um, I'm I'm grateful that um, you know my family is is here and healthy, and and we've um, today at least at least for now have survived the we're on the the back end of the COVID uh, pandemic, and so I'm I'm very uh, happy and and grateful for that. So here we are in, in quarter, uh, the second quarter of 2021. What, what are you most excited about like going forward now that we're kind of navigating through COVID and, and what are you excited ahead about? I'm excited to, be, to see people in person again. Um, but, and Bruce, you know me, my most, I'm, I'm really, really excited. My son will graduate high school this year um, and will be going to college. And so I'm excited to kind of get him off and running. It's going to be a crazy uh, uh, next few weeks, but uh, but I'm excited about that. Oh, man, what a blessing. That is so fantastic. What a good mom. <laughs> hey, okay, so what energizes you? Progress. Mm. Progress. When I make progress, as small as it is, if, if I check a box or I feel like I've been had a productive day or we're making progress, and I've said that, again, I say it all the time, right? We're making progress it drives me, it energizes me. I want to keep going and, and move to the next level. That is fantastic. Oh, I love that. Okay. Last question, Jennifer. Probably one of my favorite questions. And here's the question. Jennifer, 10 years older, she's knocking at your front door and you're going to go answer that door. What's she going to say to you? Oh, Bruce. Um, I think she's going to say, um, take it all in. Hmm. Take it all in. Pay attention. Um, you know, just every day, simple, right? Mm, I love that. Just take it in. <laughs> oh man, live in the moment. Well, live in the moment. I have been taking all this in. You have been an inspiration. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, if somebody wanted to, I don't know, they wanted to connect with you, maybe learn more about Brain Nation. Uh, how would be the best way that they would connect with you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. It's uh, Jen Swisher, J E N N. Swisher. Um, I do have social media, Facebook, Twitter. Um, I'm not on it. I'll be honest. I'm not on it as uh, frequently. And then email. Usually if you need to get hold of me or anybody would like to get a hold of me, it's, it's email is the easiest way. I respond to that. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I'll, I'll put your contact information in the, in the show notes so people can find you and, and also the link for Brand Nation so they can learn more about the organization. Hey, I appreciate you just coming on the show, sharing wisdom, your perspective, uh, your energy. It's been a lot of fun and I appreciate you. And most importantly, I appreciate your friendship, Jennifer. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate you. And thank you for the opportunity. It's been fun. Absolutely. I cannot wait to share this. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>